So let me record this and we will do our best not to show your faces. So don't be shy. Uh, <laughs> don't be too worried about that. Fortunately, I have a little lesson prepared for you guys. Modals of deduction. What is that? Well, these are just words like might, can't, and must. So we use might, may, can't, and must to say how certain we are about something. For example, the neighbors must be out because there aren't any lights on in the house. They must be out. So there's a very high possibility. That's what you think. They must be out of the house. The neighbors can't be out because there are lights on in the house. You guys probably remember Home Alone. Did you guys watch that Home Alone? How the boy oh. turned on the lights and the robbers That's thought, oh, we can't go in yeah. there. Yeah. The lights are on. We could also use could instead of might. Jack could be at a party. I'm not sure. Take a look at this picture here. Yes, it might be a cultural difference. In North America, we sometimes have house parties, but this is not something you'll see in South Korea, I think, <laughs> because everybody lives in apartments, right? Uh, but actually, I've never been to a party like this. It sounds like, I mean, this this looks like trouble to me. We could also use the B plus gerund after might, must, can't. Let's have some examples. They must be having, that's the verb plus ing, must be having a party. The music is very loud. Now it's your turn. Where are your colleagues today? What modal of probability might we use in this situation? She must be sick. Yeah. She must be sick. Depending on how certain you personally are, you could say mm -hmm. she might be sick. She could be sick. Something like yeah. that. But must is a very she high must. certainty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, by the way, colleague. Why don't? What's the difference between colleague and coworker? Uh, most people say coworker, right? Worker. Yeah. Yeah, a few months ago, you explained that yeah, colleague is an expert who working for a working for yeah attorney lawyer and expert, and then coworker is a originally or originally talked to many many situation many many job yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kim. Good to see you today. Yes, a colleague is more professional. No, call mm. more professional. Yeah, yeah. If you work at a part-time job like a Piani Jom, a convenience store, we probably would say coworker instead. Mm -hmm. My daughter has failed all her exams again. <laughs> wow, so all of her exams are failed. So let's think about the words we know so far. We know might, could, must, and then can, can't. I think I think I can and can't. Really can't. Say that again, please. Can't. Yes, she can't. She can't be she can't be working hard, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because if she were working hard, she would not have failed every single exam, but she did. That's right. Yeah, thank you. So now it's time to open up this the this uh, discussion of modals with some discussion questions. The first one is your co your coworker got fired from his job. What could be the reason? Because he will be late all the time. Okay. That's that's a really good reason why someone might be fired. Like me, who was late for this class. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> might, could. But let's try to use these modals, right? Might, could, uh, 
Um, he, might, he, he might must. he might get fired because he could be fired because he was late for his meetings every day. Yes. <laughs> so he might have been late for too many meetings. Oh, so you want to use might have. That that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so if we just want to use might, let's see if we can do that. Your coworker uh might might get fired from his job if uh if he's late too often. So you can also use might have or just might depending on how you structure the sentence. Yeah, I think uh, being late is a very very good way if you want to do that. Uh there there could be plenty of issues, right? Why this would happen. Does anybody have a different idea? Maybe you can think about your own experience. One of your coworkers were fired in the past, right? Well, he might have been argued with his co-worker every day. Mm. He might get fired because he he might okay, so have past participle have he might have been fired because he had disagreements with his coworkers. Yeah. Is that your personal experience? Have you seen this happen? Maybe. It's a very common occurrence in the office because of personality differences. I'll write that here. He might have been fired because he didn't mm -hmm. observe uh, his boss's commandments. He might have been fired because he didn't observe his boss's mm -hmm. boss uh, so comments. Uh, com comment? mm -hmm. Commandments? Maybe. Oh. maybe. Okay. I'm sorry. I think he was no, that's... saying comments. Okay, so he might have been fired because he didn't listen to his boss's boss, bo his his boss's uh, comments or ideas. Good. Thank you for these ideas, guys. Very, very good. Very good. Your son's school calls you. What might be the reason? So if you get a phone call uh, your, from your kid's school. Oh, somebody has a kid out there. Maybe you have some personal experience. Well, it's too young. It, it's obviously a baby, right? It's only uh, 14 years old. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. But maybe in the future, uh, hopefully this won't happen to you. But um, The reason they call me because... <laughs> uh, uh, about my daughter being at school, mm -hmm. but they wanted to let me know that my daughter might win the uh, math competition <laughs> in mm -hmm. the entire province. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Is it true? Hell no, not no, yet. Uh, not yet. Because your daughter is still 14 months old, right? So it can't be true. <laughs> She might have won the uh, the math competition. That's a good one. Did I spell that right? I think I spelled it right. Competition. Last question. Your friend is preparing for a job interview. What must he do to find a job? Uh, you, you can imagine you're offering me advice. You must do this. Mm -hmm. Going on a job interview, what must I do? Give me advice, my friends. There are so many things. Oh, my gosh. Can you think of a few that you can tell me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when he preparing for a job interview, he explained, he boosted himself about his personality, like uh, speaking English, uh, computer skills, and everything. Speech. So, so you must 
you must prepare to talk about your skills and qualifications. Yeah. No. You must be ready to talk about all your uh, all your the skills. You must be talk about all your skill or 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 technical knowledge. Technical knowledge. They have to know, especially if you're an engineer, that you you're able to do the job. Technical knowledge. You know how to do something. Hmm. A few ideas that I have. You must be at the interview on time. Maybe I should follow my own advice. Mm -hmm. You must maybe wear some business formal attire. Mm -hmm. okay. You must have your shoes clean. Oh, that's I wasn't expecting that. You must have clean shoes. Especially with the snow. If we're walking around in snow with leather shoes, they're going to get pretty dirty. Mm. It's going to be pretty dirty out there. I have to go to the office later and my shoes are going to be dirty. Mm. You must have uh, self-confidence. You must have self-confidence. That's a good one. I'm going to add one more. You must not drink. You must not <laughs> drink too much coffee. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I drink too much coffee, I get a little jittery. Uh, but <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe everyone's different. One of my friends actually showed up in the interview chewing a gum. And that's why she didn't get the job, like possibly. She was so overqualified for the job, but mm -hmm. then she was chewing the gum the whole time. I couldn't understand why she was doing that. But somehow she thought she was just too confident about it. And she didn't get it at the end. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, they may have thought that she had a bad attitude, right? Mm. Yeah. So we really have to pay attention to how we come across in these job mm -hmm. interviews. Thank you for that. Now, let's see mm -hmm. if I want to. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So let me switch gears a little bit and show you a few pictures. We can take a look. Can you guys see that? The three pictures of the, the people here? Mm. Yeah, so based on appearance, okay, mm. we judge we judge people. It's mm. human nature. Everyone does it. So when you see these images, what may or could or might they be? Mm. You can take a look at these boxes here. Can you see that? Yes. Mm. So the first thing I thought was the, the first guy, he sort of has a hoodie on. He looks kind of suspicious. So I thought he could be or he might be a criminal because he looks kind of like he's trying to sneak in somewhere to some place. He must be young. He doesn't have any wrinkles. He must be a young guy. Hmm. All right. So while you're thinking about something to say, I. I'll take a look at, uh, make one observation. This is an older woman. She must be, she must be, or she might be retired, right? Because she's, she's a little older, it seems like. That's just yeah. what her appearance tells me. This mm -hmm. woman is really, this woman's really beautiful. She might be a model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, 
Maybe. Actually, actually, in reality, this guy is a millionaire. Millionaire. He had. He's very rich, wealthy, and this older woman right here is a murderer, a serial killer. Can you believe it? That's what the textbook told me. Uh, so, murderer. <laughs> yeah. Very surprising, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard somebody thinking about saying something. No? Okay, we'll move on. Wow. Wow. I heard wow. <laughs> Okay, so in this story, there has been a crime committed. Somebody committed mm -hmm. a crime. Mm -hmm. And two women need to ex tell the police officer, uh, oh. it, describe the facial features mm -hmm. to the police officer. Mm -hmm. And first of all, let's take a look at these four images here. Num mm -hmm. Looking at number one first. How would you describe this person in number one? He's very good looking. Good, good. He may be good looking. Uh, he has curly hair. Curly hair, yes. Um, maybe. He has this surprised look on his eyes. His eyes are wide awake. <laughs> You think he's a little surprised, right? Oh, he looks uh, thirty meter eight. Mm. He mm. has. He also has a beard, definitely. Mm. What about this guy, number two? Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a beard, all right. His hair <laughs> is a little different. He has. Oh, she looks like John Lennon. <laughs> John Lennon? <laughs> yes, that's true. Kind of. Mm. He has straight hair. That's one of the key differences I notice. Mm -hmm. And what is that on his what is that on his face? It isn't a beard. He has mustache. Right. He has a mustache. And let me write that here. Mustache. <laughs> He's wearing a mustache. And what about number three? What's the main difference? Yeah, <laughs> strong yes. curly hair. <laughs> yeah, curly hair, mustache. His eyes are a little small, I think. He has small Definitely eyes. The biggest nose. Oh, Bigger very, nose. very big uh, nose. Yeah, very nose. observant. Mm -hmm. Very big nose. And then finally, number four, we have straight hair. And also a, a mustache. Mm. All right. So let me pull it up for you guys. Do, do, do. Where is it? Here it is. Three point. All right. Looks like we're ready to go as soon as I can find this again. Oh. Ah, technology. It's never good for me. Point thirty eight. Can you hear that? Okay, ladies, now can you describe the...
I hope yes. you can hear. Okay. Yeah. 3.38. Okay, ladies. Now, can you describe the man you saw in the bank? Well, he was uh, kind of tall. You know, he had very long legs and very skinny. You know, thin. Yes, very narrow shoulders, and he had a beard and a little mustache. No, he didn't. He had a mustache, but not a beard. It's just that I think he hadn't shaved. No, it was a beard, I'm sure. And anyway, Doris, you weren't wearing your glasses, so you can't have seen him very well. I could see perfectly well. Ladies, ladies, please. So, no mustache then? No, he had a mustache, but he didn't have a beard. And what about his hair? Dark. Yes, short, dark hair. Straight? No, curly, I'd say. Wouldn't you say, Doris? Yes, very curly. So, dark, curly hair? Yes, that's what we said. Are you deaf or something? What about his eyes? Did you notice what color they were? Brown eyes, nothing special, and very small. But he had a big nose. Yes, a very big nose. And what time was it when you saw this man? Okay, we'll stop there. She said, are you deaf or something? It's kind of, it's kind of rude. So rude, wow. Are you deaf or something? So that means, so somebody who is deaf doesn't have the ability to hear. So, anyway, which of these pictures best describes the criminal that they were talking about? Number three. Three, yes, yes. Curly hair, small eyes, big nose, and a mustache. So, very good. So, we began today by talking about models of deduction. Do you remember what those were? Must, can, could, might. But we're also talking about judging people or basically, yeah, yeah judging people by appearance. So I'm going to ask you one question, write it here. Do you think people in your country tend to judge people by their appearance? In what way? This is a difficult question. It's a very open-ended discussion question. So if it's too difficult, it's okay. We can pass. I just wonder if anybody has any opinion. Well, first of all, I think that judging people on appearance is human nature. It's not just a Korean thing. It's everybody does it, right? Why? Do you judge people by their appearance? Well, yeah, I do so, yeah, all I, the time. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, when I mm -hmm. go to yeah department store, when I have a dresser up, yeah, Many cross many people or workers are welcome to me, but and then I'm really enjoying enjoying shopping. And... Yeah, and I I think I get different receptions. Like if I haven't shaved for a while and I'm growing a beard and I look a little scary, I think people are more less maybe less friendly, right? So I I don't know. But anyway, people, we judge by appearance. This is this is human nature, right? And sometimes uh, it's a bit hard to see the uh, someone's mm -hmm. face when he has uh, hair of his nose. Oh, okay. So so nose hairs oh, that bothers nose you. Nose hair. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So so when when. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when people <laughs> have like nose hairs coming out of their nose, uh, what do you think about that? Like <laughs> that he needs a wife. 
<laughs> that he needs to that he doesn't care about his appearance that much or uh, or to. probably his eyes just gone to bed. He can't see them very well. That's probably what's happening. Oh, no, he can't see. Yeah. It could be many things. Do you so, judge uh, people by their looks? Of course. And that's actually, I, I think everybody does. And that's what we're yeah, going to probably. talk yeah, about yeah. here. Have you have you seen this woman before? This woman in the that's picture. Amazing. Yeah. You know who she is? That um, She's at uh, the... the, uh, the what is it? Audition star, isn't she? Yeah. So she. The British got talent. Mm, British yeah, yeah, got talent. Right. That's that's the mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Mm, her name is Susan Boyle. That's right. Mm. Yes. Mm. Now I remember. And when she first went on TV, nobody thought she would be successful, right? Do you remember the situation? Everybody was very skeptical. Totally. I think it was kind of strategic a thing that she actually did. She wanted to show off like mm. such um in a nerdy kind of crazy mummy looking i don't think she looks like that all the time though i think it was just more like it made up for the show don't you think it could be so this is when she first auditioned this is how she looked right here and then later on this is this is her later on with with mm -hmm. uh makeup so it, it for the show she didn't really put any effort at all so it could have been intentional. That's true. All right. So just so everybody's at the same page, I'm going to play a short clip of that show. And you can see, pay, pay special attention to the reaction that she got. Can you guys hear that? Hi, right, what's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. Okay, uh, Susan, and um, where are you from? I am from Blackburn near Bathgate, West Lothian. It's a big town. It's a sort of collection of, it's a collection of uh, villages. I had to think there. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. And that's just one side of me. <laughs> okay, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? I've never been given the chance before, but he's hoping it'll change. Okay, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine Page. Like what are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. Okay. Big song. <laughs> yeah? Yes. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. All right, so I'll stop there. But I think you get the point. People were not expecting such a wonderful performance from such a plain-looking woman. She, she, we didn't expect it. So, yes. all right. So let's go back. To this this article here and i i thought it was interesting so it might be it might be interesting to you and as i go through the article we're going to be learning about susan boyle and the issues that are relevant here i will bring out some talk about some words that you may not know and maybe we can have some discussions all right so yes appearance matters i think we can all agree on that 
when Susan Boyle, oh, let me zoom in so you can see the first paragraph a little easier. When Susan Boyle first walked onto the stage of the Britain's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent TV show, people immediately thought that she looked like a 47-year-old single woman who lived alone with her cat, which, in fact, she was. Nobody thought for a minute that she had a chance of doing well on the show or could ever become a star. But when she opened her mouth and started singing, I dreamed a dream from the musical Les Miserables. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Everybody was amazed. After the video of her performance went viral, journalists started talking about how wrong it is to stereotype people into categories and how we <laughs> should learn once and for all not to judge a book by its cover. Mm. So let's let's actually stop there for a minute. Her performance went viral. We're not talking about a computer virus, right? Uh, have you guys heard this expression before? Went yeah, viral. Mm -hmm. So when something goes <laughs> viral, it spreads through the internet mm -hmm. very fast. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't stereotype people into categories. Mm -hmm. That means we shouldn't judge people by the by general ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, based on her appearance, many people stereotyped her. They they thought that she would be a woman who lived alone with her cat. Why? Well, we'll talk about that in the next paragraphs. But stereotyping could be very uh, damaging in some situations. Mm. Yeah. And if you guys don't know what go viral or stereotype means, I do encourage you to make a note of that. And maybe you can look it up in your dictionary later. Mm. All right. I'll continue. But social scientists say that there are reasons why we judge people based on how they look. On a very basic level, judging people by their appearance means putting them quickly into categories. In the past, being able to do this was vitally important, and humans developed the ability to judge other people in seconds. Susan Fisk, a professor of psychology and neuroscience at Princeton University, said that traditionally, traditionally, most stereotypes, most stereotypes are linked to judging the person whether they are dangerous or not. In prehistoric times, it was important to stay away from people who looked aggressive and dominant. So... In the past, our ability to judge people very quickly was essential. They use the they use this expression here, vitally important, very essential to our survival. Any questions so far? No. Okay, I'll keep reading. All right. One reason why our brains persist in using stereotypes, experts say, is that often they give us generally accurate information, even if all the details aren't right. Miss Boyle's appearance, for example, accurately told us a lot about her, including her socioeconomic level and um. lack of worldly experience. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's take a pause here. So our socioeconomic level is the status we have in society, and money. it's closely related to the amount of money that we have. Mm -hmm. So in Korea, I think the highest socioeconomic level would probably be like the chables. If you got, I've heard of, I've read some articles about the chables, right? I think everybody knows about chables. So they're like the the top mm. business owning families, I guess. So there are various socioeconomic levels. Worldly experience, the lack of worldly experience. This means she seemed very naive. She didn't have a mm. lot of knowledge about the world. That's what it seemed like. 
Do you agree with that in the video? Did she seem naive? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. I guess so. Yeah. She was so Yeah, but, she came from a small I'm town. Just saying that, mm -hmm. like, maybe I am just too, too. I don't know, too vain or too weathered a <laughs> person. Maybe I'm just too old. Um, yeah, yeah. But then it feels like really it didn't really come across as genuine truth feeling to it. You know, like it it, it was almost like a design to make people so shocked at that that it was expecting to have a, such a dramatic change you know in the in the atmosphere mm -hmm. so when she even talked like later on her interviews she doesn't talk like that she doesn't have that such a naive tone of saying oh i don't know anything you know mm -hmm. like like almost it was like almost made up so i didn't really buy into that and i never really liked her personality either <laughs> i thought mm. it was kind of too quirky too weird yeah maybe i'm just too i don't know i'm not a nice person maybe maybe that's why <laughs> that's an interesting observation i didn't watch any of the interviews after this so you think she might have been acting during her initial performance yes maybe. that's what i think so and i mean Mm -hmm. For that, like, I mean, a lot of experts were saying that there's no way she would actually got there without any professional, like, training or a little bit of a help from anyone. Like, this is not her solely, like, solely on her own work. So for her to come out and say, hey, I have nothing, that doesn't really make sense. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. But, well, I mean, her intention or not only for her, but then her entire network's intention to make her such big success probably worked. So this was another piece of little, you know, business making money. Right. Well, thank you for your input. I honestly, I had no idea. So you said in later interviews, her way of, her way of speaking changed. So I didn't, uh, wasn't aware of that. All right, we're almost done here. People's enthusiasm for Susan Boyle and all the other underdogs who end up winning is unlikely to stop us from stereotyping people. This may be one of the reasons why, although Miss Boyle expressed the hope that maybe this could teach them a lesson or set an example, she did begin to change her appearance, wearing makeup, dyeing her gray hair, and appearing in more stylish clothing. So like you brought out, she did change later. She developed mm -hmm. a different style. So there are two. There's one more expression. Uh, we have underdogs, under, underdog, and yeah. Underdog means someone that we don't expect to win or do well. Susan Boyle when in that first performance was definitely an underdog in this sense. Underdog. Not a top dog, an underdog. Somebody who we expect to perform or to underperform. Mm. Good. Okay. Some good words to know. And also another expression that was in this article is don't judge a book by its cover. You've heard of this before, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't judge just by appearances. Mm. People solely or just by the way they look. Don't judge a book by its cover. And I think that that's the sentiment, the idea that this article was trying to emphasize too. I heard that there's a new, um, not new one, uh, German yeah. saying that what you are is what you wear. Isn't that interesting? Ah, okay. I've never heard that before. Yeah. And then there was a famous quote from the movie, like the, the what is it? The suit make the men or something. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, so is it the suit makes the man? 
Yeah, yeah, I think mm. that's the one. The suit makes the man. Yeah, these so, are kind of proverbs. Yeah, so those are things that would actually tell us that your appearances are quite, they do matter, you know? <laughs> right, right. And I think there's some truth to that. So we have some discussion questions here. Uh, do you think, do you think, let's see, on, on what occasions might you judge someone by their appearance? Let's actually mm -hmm. circle this. This is a very general conversation question, a little difficult, but let's see if anybody has some ideas. On what occasions might you judge someone by their appearance? Yes, I, I actually um I miss someone who wearing glass glasses and uh, mm -hmm. that good looking guy. I think he's smart. Yeah. Oh, okay. So when someone wears glasses, they look more intelligent. Intelligent to me. Yeah, I got that. When I, when I, you sometimes when I wear glasses, people say, "Oh, you look so smart." But when I don't wear after my eye surgery, when I don't wear glasses, I don't hear that anymore. So I'm not smart anymore. Uh, so glasses make us look more intelligent. That's right. Good. All right, so we have some more minutes. Let's move on to the next topic. Um, getting back to this PPT here. Oh, let's pass. Can, okay, so these other, we have these other words, can, could, and be able to. Can is another modal verb. The past condition, the past conditional form is could. Mm -hmm. I think you all learned this in middle school, but this could be a good review for you, right? When we practice speaking. For all the other tenses and forms, we use be able to plus the base form. Or ability and possibility. Mm -hmm. So let's practice. My little boy. Couldn't speak. Mm, wasn't able to, couldn't speak until he was almost That's two good. years old. They're both okay. They're both okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Trick question. Number two, he hasn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hasn't been able to fix my bike yet. Mm, he hasn't been able to. That's correct. Mm. And then one more. We won't be able to be able to. We won't be able to go on vacation this year. So pretty easy, pretty easy. Let's try to use these expressions in our discussions. But first of all, let's remember what they were. So we have be able to. And what were the other ones? Won't be able to, be able to, hasn't been able to. Yeah, can, can could be able can, to. Yeah, couldn't and can. Mm. Can, could, be able to. But I like how you, you also use the negatives. Can't, mm. couldn't. Mm. Yeah, and wasn't. Wasn't able to. Mm. Okay, so the first one is, what can you do well? I think this is a little easier than the last one. What can you do well? 
Very well. Not at all. I don't know either. You know, to be honest, I can't really do anything extremely well. <laughs> uh, I can't so sleep well everywhere. <laughs> You could you could say I can't <laughs> I, can I can't well. think of anything I do very well. That's me. That's my answer. Oh. So somebody mentioned sleep. Can you say that again? What did? Uh, I can't sleep well in everywhere. Mm, okay. Anywhere, everywhere. <laughs> I can sleep anytime, anywhere. Well, no matter where <laughs> no matter. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I can sleep well no matter where I am. Can you name three things you cannot or you can't do but wish you could? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. I wish I wish I, I could. could. Eat less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want <laughs> Korean I, I wish I, I could eat uh, less. <laughs> control my. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's what you mean by eat less, right? I wish I could, could uh, control my diet better. Or... Definitely eat less. <laughs> or just eat less? Okay, I wish I could eat less. There you go. It's like... <laughs> You have to eat it. Like uh, after you're having a baby, you know, somehow something changes in your body. You you're almost in like the survival mode to look mm -hmm. after your child. So you have to eat. Like literally, you have to just chuck it up <laughs> all the no, time. Yeah. yeah, it's very physically demanding. So I wish mm -hmm. I could eat less and look up myself a little more. Uh and I wish I could mm -hmm. uh read better because my eyes are gone so bad now oh. <laughs> i might need the reading glasses oh so good see better. yeah those are about the things yeah, yeah. I, I think i'm okay other than that yeah those two thank you for that and we have mm -hmm. one more. Can you think of a skill that everyone should be able to do? I wish I could make money a lot. <laughs> oh, I, so that's for question, question <laughs> number two. One. Thank you for that. Oh, yes. I wish I could make a make lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah, on oh. some other. <laughs> good, good. A skill, I, I think everyone should be able to program. Um, what? Program what? Computers, <laughs> program computers. Ah, that's crazy. Mm. You know, these days, the young kids are all learning how to code in school. That's I what I heard. Know, that is crazy. I don't, I don't know how to do it, but I feel like I can't read. <laughs> Everybody can do it you know for me. That's a really good one. Yeah. Now I can say I think that everyone should be able to just go out and play and have just some pure fun. I That's like that. To be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think we we should all be able to go out and play and have good fun. Like today, this is the weekend, right? After this class, what are you guys going to do? We're just about to wrap it up here. I'm, I'm heading. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, you go ahead, girl. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I didn't quite hear that. Oh, I have my 14 month old baby, of course. So uh -huh. I'm going to take her out uh, to a playground and then give her some opportunities to slide down. <laughs> First time uh, going on a real slide today. Oh, that's really good. Can she already yeah. walk? Can she walk? Oh, she's too tall and she's kind of heavy side, so she can't mm -hmm. walk really well yet. But uh, she speaks, so that's a good thing. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's pretty early for her to speak, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, months. she does that. I wonder where she got that from. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
I heard that boy that girls do learn how to speak faster than boys. So mm -hmm. that's that's one thing too. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for your participation today. We're going to end the class here. And do you have any questions before we we stop? No. <laughs> no questions. Okay. <laughs> thank you once again for participating and. Uh, yeah, sorry about being me being late today. Uh, hopefully it won't happen again. All right. Have a good weekend. Have a, okay. have a good weekend. Yeah. Thank See you. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.